Hello, my name is Bernard Zabel and I am happy to participate digitally at the 35th anniversary of iOS Press. Uh, I'm sorry I cannot be there, um, but uh, hopefully my presentation will give uh, some inspiration. Um, at this uh, point, let me also thank uh, Einar and uh, Raziel for an outstanding support of my journal, Restorative Neurology and Neuroscience. The lecture will be on the topic of fake publications which are produced by paper mills, a global threat to the permanent scientific record. It is an issue that everyone in the scientific academic publishing field should be interested in because it has quite large ramifications and consequences for science in general. Now, the issue I explored is to find out what are paper mills and um, what is the scope? That is, how many fake publications are published? If one checks the Chinese internet, one can find hundreds of paper mill ads which offer services of writing scientific reports, uh, term papers, and publications which are eventually uh, published in uh, reputable journals because the quality of these papers is high enough to pass peer review. And it is openly advertised um, in the Chinese internet asking students why should you do so much work because you cannot write papers, you have not learned how to do it, your advisor had no time. Uh, but yet you are required to submit a SCI publication before you can graduate. And there are many scientists who as well are interested in that and the medical field seems to be uh, particularly affected uh, by uh, this problem. Now, what are paper mills? Paper mills are basically scientific writing agencies for-profit oriented and potentially illegal because they sell fakes and make money off it. The fakes are manipulated manuscripts or even fabricated manuscripts which are produced automatically using artificial intelligence and uh, which present data that are either altered from original data so the data become significant or they are completely fabricated out of the blue and submitted for publication. Now, paper mills um, are mostly located in China and this business um, is possible because um, the open access uh, publication um, uh, culture um, allows publication without printing. So, um, this way, the cost of producing publications is much lower. Uh, the problem is that the quality of these publications are so high that they pass peer review. And I must admit, even in my own journal, um, several papers have been published that in retrospect um, are clearly uh, fake papers. So not only is the writing done by the agency, but also the data are fabricated um, depending on what the author who, or, who orders this service and who obviously has to pay for it. Now, the, the service by paper mills is mostly used by students and also scientists or doctors who have no track record in scientific publishing or who under pressure to publish more because of institutional pressure, because of grant supports they wish to obtain um, because of um, uh, academic reputation or issues like a salary raise and promotion. Um, our analysis shows that especially the lower ranking institutions in the countries um, have a relatively high percentage of such fake papers. But they are, of course, um, I'm not saying that um, all papers from China are fake because there are a lot of very serious scientists who do honest work and who publish in an honest way. 
um, but yet there are also many who don't. National statistics about it are somewhat unclear. When I uh, ask a colleague to find out in China uh, if they are aware of the paper mill issue, the basic information he got after a second phone call that they are aware of this problem and they have uh, 26 cases. Now, 26 cases, given the size of the Chinese scientific enterprise, uh, is a bit low, I shall say. Um, the problem is actually so large, and I will show shortly how large it is, um, because of the unrealistic publication pressure uh, and the anxiety of the scientists or the students not being able to achieve their career goals and the institution not achieving the scientific publication scores that maybe the local or the regional or even the national government request. Now we analyzed fake papers uh, by studying certain criteria, the criteria of which I am not able to share with you because obviously um, if this becomes public, it would be a great service for the paper mills to improve um, their technology of not getting detected. So therefore, please forgive me for not sharing the details, but I share the results. So we analyzed not only my own journal, but also 10 other um, or nine other medical journals. So that overall uh, 10 journals were initially screened and um, we selected a, um, a representative sample of 100 publications uh, in each of the 10 uh, medical journals. And we found that 238 out of a thousand publications are suspected fake publications. That is, we're not sure, but we, we suspect them to be. Um, and the percentage uh, obviously is 23.8%, which is roughly also what my own journal experienced. So I must say I'm embarrassed, but I am uh, with the journal, you know, in, in the average crowd. So not particularly good and not particularly bad. The leading countries are China by far, but also other countries um, produce fake papers, such as India, Iran, um, Turkey, and Russia. Now we extended this analysis then to um, also uh, open access journals, and we picked three journals from the Frontier series and found that here, um, 112 out of 300 publications are presumably fake. That is over one third of all publications in those three journals. Of course, three is a small number. I don't know if it represents an underestimation or an overestimation um, of um, the, um, the problem. Compared to a recent report in Nature, uh, our numbers are somewhat comparable to what was reported by Nature as uh, untrustworthy, untrustworthy articles, which is in the order of 26% of all articles are presumably fake. Now, that is quite a shocking number, and it seems to be true across different journals and across different disciplines. Now, how is it possible that um, so many papers uh, can be published because the sheer number is huge. Well, the business model of paper mills is they offer different services. For example, um, uh, they are, offer project design and they use experimental data that the student or the, the scientist provides, and then they fix the data and then goes to write a paper to be published in an SCI journal. Uh, alternatively, and that becomes a bit more expensive, they provide um, the data as well. So they are fabricated out of the blue and ghostwritten and published. Um, and um, they may even uh, include third party review falsifications. That is that the reviewer themselves or the reviews are falsified and the paper published. And finally, uh, they are the trading companies who simply trade papers and you just say, I order a paper, and then they pick it out somewhere, uh, maybe downloading an existing paper, making slight changes, and then get that published. Now, all of these things have price tags. So if any one of you would like to order a fake paper, 
excuse me, of course you don't. But if you like to order one, then it depends on what it is you order and how much it costs. It depends mostly on the impact factor. Low impact factors and only submitting a paper to a journal that has an impact factor of one to two is 1000 euros. If you want more like writing, submission and publication, you need to pay 8000 euro. That's the price tag for that service. Now the, the, the price rises with the impact factor. So with the impact factor of two, uh, the cost is higher, double. So double the impact factor, double the cost. And if you go even further, you go to impact factor 2.5, uh, it may cost you 26,000 euro for project design experimental operation, meaning they fabricate the data, writing, submission, and eventual uh, publishing. Now that is um, quite a, a, a business as you can imagine, because if you make revenue as a paper mill in the order of 26,000 euros per paper, then you're highly motivated to publish as many papers as possible and you advertise vigorously in the internet. So if you project this to the number of fake papers that we estimate to exist, you um, will be astonished that uh, biomedical field alone, which publishes in five years, six million publications worldwide in all fields. If you calculate the probability of suspected fake papers, um, you come up in a five year period um, uh, of a million papers, that is, um, it is 200,000 fake papers per year. And if you take all of science, including medicine, it's 14 million papers that are published in five years, which basically comes down to 450 fake publications per year, um, which are published in the scientific permanent record. Uh, of note, only about 700 or 1,000 uh, papers are identified um, as fake by retractions, which is one out of 3000 papers is eventually retracted. So the business revenue from all of this for the paper mills is 10,000 euros um, uh, per paper on average, which is an estimate, of course, uh, which boils down to a total revenue uh, business model of 4.5 billion euros annually and this does not include um, uh, any predator journals that i haven't even counted nor the open access fees that are uh, charged by the publishers um, so since um, i'm talking to a group of publishers here uh, obviously and those who who are interested in uh, who, or whose business is the scientific publishing uh, it is an issue of concern that um, has a lot of risks associated with it. Paper mills impact science and society on a large scale. First of all, we should consider them to be a crime. It's like selling a product that's not working. Paper mills create fake publications which pollute uh, our knowledge base and the scientific permanent record um, for monetary benefits. We shall not support such criminal activity and all of us editors, publishers, scientists are urged to be aware that the issue is a significant issue. It's not only single cases. They create a lot of waste of human and financial resources. Imagine somebody does an experiment which is based on fake publications which have wrong data. Then the waste of human and financial resources is tremendous. You know, a serious research, research project may um, cost several hundred thousand euros for a publication or two. Um, so if that then leads you astray and the fake publications um, are the basis of this work, it's a waste of time and money for everyone. Uh, most seriously, besides uh, loss of financial resources, is the risks for health, for technology, for the environment and the economy. Uh, let me um, mention that concerning the health risks for health issue, there are already publications available 
that base their work on and cite fake publications in the field of genetic engineering. Now that should wake everyone up um, that this can um, not continue any longer and it needs to be stopped. Fake publications harm all honest authors and it also harms the institutions and the countries who are involved and their respective reputation. And finally, fake publications, 28% or so fake publications, if known by the public, the risk is that science loses its reputation. It loses our trust as citizens in scientific results and it will damage the reputation of academic institutions, um, governments uh, and countries. So therefore, I suggest that we get together uh, in what is called Science Integrity Alliance um, uh, to find out how to best attack this problem and um, how to build a more trust worthy world um, for the science and technology development. All of us editors and publishers have this responsibility. And I um, invite you to think about the issue um, and come up with ideas. Finally, I'm sorry that I have to present bad news to you in a celebration of a, an academic uh, publishing company, iOS Press, which I have worked with and I'm very happy to work with. Uh, but sometimes bad news um, are also good news because a crisis can be also a time for opportunity. And the opportunity here is to clean the permanent scientific record so that science can be trusted from here on forward. Thank you very much and enjoy the meeting. Have a beer or champagne. Um, uh, 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 at the party tonight. I'm sorry I cannot join uh, and uh, appreciate the opportunity to give this presentation. Thank you very much and bye bye. Professor Sabel from the University of Magdeburg.